Good morning folks, it is Wednesday morning the 27th of May and we're going to read from Acts chapter 19 this morning as we gather together. So let's read God's word. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul travelled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast where he found several believers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? they asked. No, they replied, we haven't even heard there is a Holy Spirit. Then what baptism did you experience, he asked. They replied, the baptism of John. Paul said, John's baptism called for repentance from sin. But John himself told people to believe that there is one who would come later, meaning Jesus. As soon as they heard this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. Then Paul went to the synagogue and preached boldly for the next three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some became stubborn, rejecting his message and publicly speaking against the way. So Paul left the synagogue and took the believers with him. He held daily discussions at the lecture hall in Tyrannus. They went on for t the next two years. So the people throughout the whole region of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. When handkerchiefs or aprons were merely touched, his skin merely touched his skin were placed on the sick people. They were healed of their diseases and evil spirits were expelled. A group of Jews were travelling from town to town casting out evil spirits. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incarnation, saying, I command you in the name of Jesus, who Paul teaches, to come out. Seven sons of Scarva, leading priests, were doing this. But one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus, and I know Paul, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leapt on them, overpowered him and attacked him with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. The story of what happened spread quickly through all of Ephesus to Jews and Greeks alike. A solemn fear descended on the city and the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honoured. Many who, believe, who became believers confessed their sinful practices. A number of them who had been practising sorcery brought their incarnation books and burned them at the public bonfire. The value of the books was several million dollars. So the message of the Lord spread widely and had a powerful effect. Afterwards, Paul felt compelled by the Spirit to go over to Macedonia and Achaia before going to Jerusalem. And after that, he said, I must go to Rome. He sent his two assistants, Timothy and Aristus, ahead to Macedonia while he stayed a while longer in the province of Asia. About that time, several severe serious trouble developed in Ephesus concerning the way. It began with Demetrius, a silversmith who had a large business manufacturing silver shrines to the Greek gods, Artemis. He kept many craftsmen busy. He called them together along with others employed in similar trades and addressed them as follows. Gentlemen, you know that our wealth comes from this business, but as you have seen and heard, this man Paul has persuaded many people that handmade gods aren't really gods at all. And he's done this not only here in Ephesus, but, yet, but throughout the entire region. Of course, I'm not going to talk about the loss of, public, of our public respect for our businesses. I'm also concerned that the temple of the great god Artemis will lose its influence. And that Artemis, this magnificent god worshipped throughout the province of Asia and all around the world, will be robbed of her great prestige. At this their anger boiled and they began shouting, Great is Artemis of Ephesus. Soon the whole city was filled with confusion. Everybody rushed to the amphitheatre, dragging along Gallius and Articus, who were Paul's travelling companions from Macedonia. Paul wanted to go in too, but the believers wouldn't let him. Some of the officials of the province, friends of Paul, also sent a message to him, begging him not to risk his life by entering, entering the amphitheatre. Inside, the people were all shouting, some with one another and some others. 
Everyone was in confusion. In fact, most of them didn't even know why they were there. The Jews in the crowd pushed Alexander forward and told him to explain the situation. He motioned for silence and tried to speak. But when the crowd realised he was a Jew, they started shouting again and kept it up for two hours. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. At last, the mayor was able to quiet them down enough to speak. Citizens of Ephesus, he said, everyone knows that Ephesus is the official guardian of the temple of the great Artemis, whose image fell down to us from heaven. Since this is an undeniable fact, you should stay calm and not do anything rash. You have brought these men here, but they have stolen nothing from the temple, and they have not spoken against our goddess. If Demetrius and the craftsmen have a case against them, and the courts are in session and the officials can hear the case at once, let them make formal charges. And if there are any complaints about any other matters, they can be settled in the legal assembly. I am afraid we are in danger of being charged with rioting by the Roman government, since there is no cause for all this commotion. And if Rome demands an, an explanation, we won't know what to say. Then he dismissed them, and they dispersed. Amen. The end of Acts chapter 19. Again, a, another chapter where you hear a little bit more about one of Paul's journeys, and about his companions, and about the, the problems that they faced. But it's interesting, it talks about the, the people being packed into the amphitheater and just shouting for two hours. And most of them not knowing why they were there. They simply followed the crowd. They didn't think for themselves. They didn't reason things out for themselves. They just simply went along with what everybody else was saying. Is that us? Do we simply go along with what everybody else is saying? Or do we actually sit down and try to reason things out for ourselves, try to figure things out for ourselves? And we have that responsibility. We have to read God's word. We have to understand it for ourselves um, and, and figure out what it means to us. Yes, we can listen to different people as they talk and explain what they believe. But we as individuals have the responsibility of figuring out for ourselves exactly what we think and what we believe. And, and being true to what God reveals to us. Because... That's what the Bible is all about and that's what living as a Christian is all about. Letting God reveal things to us each day in little stages so that we can understand them and apply them and let them change us and transform us for the better. So today, hopefully at some stage you'll sit down yourself and read a part of the Bible. Read it so that, yeah, you can say that you've read it, but also read it so that you can look at the passage and ask what's going on here. What's this passage about? And see if there's one thing that stands out for you, one question uh, that you want answered. And yes, turn to a bookcase, um, lift a, a book maybe about it, um, go online and look at some of the online resources to explain. But then stop and pray and ask God to show you what it means and to show you how it's speaking to you and how you can apply it to your life or how it should change or alter maybe what you're doing. That's living as a Christian in a day-to-day -day way. Thank you everybody who came down yesterday and who gave us food for the food bank. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, it will make a big difference to a lot of people. It's also good to be able to talk to folks. Uh, I know a lot of people um, find that useful and beneficial as well. Um, it's appropriate that today the Presbyterian Church asks us to pray about mental health realising that mental health continues to be a struggle for a number of people and even for those people who in the past before would have had good mental health this lockdown has caused um, troubling times so let's pray for all of us this morning as we come together let's pray father thank you again for your word thank you again that we can read it and thank you that you speak to us through it lord as you bring challenges to us each day Help us to listen to you and to accept the challenges that you bring. Father, this continues to be a hard time for all of us. So we pray for all, all people right the way around the world for, with regard to mental health. Lord, for those who are finding it really tough and really struggling, 
Help them to be able to reach out to just maybe one person and speak to them. Lord, as we're speaking to friends and family, help us to be on the lookout for those who are struggling so that we can have conversations, so that we can reassure people, that we can just draw alongside them and walk with them um, and help people to stay strong and stay positive in you. Lord, thank you again for this day. Uh, and be with us, we pray, and just bless us and take care of us in all aspects. Father, we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, and see you again tomorrow, same time, same place. Take care. God bless. Bye.